Hey Luke here at the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. I'm going to show you my favorite knots. These are the most useful knots that everyone should know that you can use in everyday life, whether you're camping or hiking or just mucking around the house. All right, the first knot I want to show you really isn't an outdoorsy knot. It's a knot that I use around the house all the time. It's a knot designed for storing cords and ropes and stuff. So you get this big gob of, of extension cord or rope that's just sitting in your garage and it's all tangled up. This is a knot that'll help you store it and get at it quickly and keep everything nice and tidy. Now this knot is called the chain sinnet or the daisy chain or the monkey braid. It's very simple. Make a loop, you reach through the loop, you pull out another loop. You reach through that loop, you pull out another loop. You reach through that loop and you pull out another loop. You reach through that loop and pull out another loop. It's, it's like a magic trick. You just keep going and it makes, it's like crocheting for men. So it makes this and then when you pull it, it just all comes out. And you can make the loops as big or as small as you want. And uh, the smaller they are, the kind of the, the more it stays together and the more line you take up. Shortens rope down to about a third of its length. So if you have a hundred foot rope and you go and you make a daisy chain out of it, you'll have about 33 foot of daisy chain. You can see there, ding, and it's you know it's doesn't really fall apart or anything, and then you just pull out as much as you need, and then when you're done, you just go back and recreate the days chain. Start back where you left off. If you're going to do the daisy chain with an electrical cord, start with the male prong and then work your way down. This 100 foot extension cord goes down to about 30 feet. Hang it up on the wall uh, and keeps it out of the way. So easy to use. You pull out as much or as little as you want. Just retie up when you're done. Now if you're in a situation where you need an adjustable length of rope, like you're stringing up a tarp or putting up a tent, um, we were often taught in Boy Scouts to use the taut line and hitch or the midshipman's knot as it's called. But I've got something better. And the reason why it's better is because it's faster. Not just, it's not faster to tie, it's faster to take down. So this right here is the Ferriman's Friction Hitch. It's a little bit stronger than the taut line hitch or the midshipman's knot. You can put more force on it without the loop closing. But the real advantage is that it's so easy to take apart. So when it's time to break down camp or take that tarp down, it takes seconds. This knot allows you to adjust the length of a rope by adjusting the size of the loop at the end of the rope. When the rope is slack, you can adjust the knot and make the loop bigger or smaller, which shortens or lengthens the length of the rope. This knot is perfect for situations where you want to adjust the length of your rope without having to retie the knots. So the way you tie it is you make this little loop that you see here. And then you take that side, the left side of the loop, and wrap it around itself three times, forming this little hole. And you take the tag end and you pull it halfway through, forming a bite. And then you cinch it up, you pull on the, on the, uh, the working end of the, the rope, then you grab the knot in these two places, those two places exactly, and you pull it and that tightens the knot. This knot can take a lot more pressure than the taut line knot, and it comes undone by just pulling the tag end. What I think is the biggest disadvantage of the Ferriman friction hitch and the taut line hitch and the midshipman's knot is that you can only adjust them when they're not under load. So while you're pulling on them like this, you've got something pressure on, it's, you can't really adjust the length of it. You can't use it very effectively to tighten something up. A little bit, but, but not much, okay? If you wanna be able to really tighten down on something, uh, if you want to really basically use a knot version of a ratchet strap, then you're going to want this knot, the trucker's hitch or the power clinch knot. All right, so let me show you the trucker's hitch. This is a great knot for tightening down loads, for putting your knot under tension. So you take this and you make a loop and think that 
we're gonna make a slip knot. So, and what you do is you take your line, you wrap it around, okay, and then you feed it through, and it creates a pulley system. You can go and really crank this down. You can put a lot of tension on here. And then once you got it tight, you pinch this with your, your thumb. Don't let it slip. And then you come through and tie a half hitch. And if needs be, you can come back and do another one. And that is the trucker's hitch or the power clinch knot. And it is a fabulous knot to learn. If you don't have ratchet straps, if you need to tie something down or string a hammock, this is fabulous. There's another way to do this. You can go and pinch this down. And then You can do it like that. You can see here there's a there's a bite. And then when you want to do it, all you gotta do is the whole thing comes undone. If you want your rope super tight, this is the knot for you. I use it on trailers for tying things to the roof of my car, but I also use it for stringing up a hammock so you can get it just really tight. And it's even strong enough to hold my fat butt. So 250 pounds, there you go. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the bowline knot, which is a great knot for putting a loop on the end of a line when you don't want that loop to cinch up. It's a strong knot, it's easy to tie, it's easy to untie, and you can even tie it one-handed. So one of the most common mistakes with the bowline knot is that when you make this loop, you gotta make it this way, with this part on top. If you make it like this, and you do everything else exactly right, it just comes apart. So remember, you gotta flip it up. Now another common mistake with the bowline knot is people will come down and around and do this. So you've got one line in, one line out, and it basically ends up collapsing into a separate knot, okay? And it's not a catastrophic failure, but remember, flip the loop on top, comes up, around, and down. And this is where you hear the uh, things about, you make the hole, and the rabbit comes out of his hole, he goes around the tree, and he goes back down his hole. And that's the bowline knot. This knot is really easy to undo, even if it's been under a lot of strain. So this is a great knot to use in combination with the trucker's hitch. And because the loop doesn't cinch up, it's great for tying a rope around a person. Okay. Huh? Now you ready? Yeah. Whoa! Next, I'm gonna show you the constrictor knot. There's two ways to tie this knot. One is the loop method, where you make these two loops, just like I'm demonstrating here, and then you slide it over the end of something, like the end of a bag or the end of a post, and you just tighten it up like that. Or you can do it the tag-in method, where you just wrap it over itself once, then over the top, then tuck it under both parts and then cinch it up. The constrictor knot squeezes things together but is easy to undo. So it's great for bundling up a bunch of fishing rods for transportation. Easy to tie, pretty quick, and easy to undo. Also works good for tying together a bunch of two by fours or if you've got a bunch of uh, rakes in the back of your pickup truck. But it's also, if you grab in the right place, it comes apart pretty quickly and easily. This is also a knot that's used for closing up the end of a bag. So if you've got uh, bags of fertilizer in your garage and, and you don't have any twisty ties, then you can just take a bit of twine and do a constrictor knot. 
Also works good on children, keeps them in line. And uh, yeah, and when you're left babysitting the children, a constrictor knot and a bed sheet will uh, make playtime a lot more fun. Now I'm going to show you two ways of tying a cow hitch knot. One is you wrap a loop around something, then feed the tag end through the loop. And you can use this for a lot of different things. Everything from attaching fishing leaders to swivels to attaching uh, rope to a piece of equipment. It's very versatile. Um, or you can do a, a cow hitch knot that's attached to the, its own rope and this forms a noose that will cinch up very tightly. And so this is great because the loop collapses on itself and will grip whatever it's tied around very tightly. But what's really nice about this is no matter how tight you squeeze that knot, it is extremely easy to untie. Just give yourself a little slack in the loop and then you just push downward on those two parts and push the loop off. And no matter how tight that knot is, it'll come off easily. So I use this on hammocks because otherwise the knots are hard to get off. So another knot that's really good is the half hitch or the double half hitch. So you can see here, it's really similar to what I just tied, only you do the second half backwards. And this will also cinch up and, and work pretty well, but it's not as easy to untie as the cow hitch knot. The reason why I like this knot and why I'm including it is because you can do a quick release version of it. So it starts off just like the, the double half hitch or the cow hitch knot. Then you put a bite in it like this, cinch that up, and there you go. You've got a knot that cinches up and acts, acts like the cow hitch knot, but then it's quick release, okay? So it's a, a nice little, little version, and if you want to be able to take a knot down really quickly. So when I use a ferroman's friction hitch, I tie this knot onto the other end of the line. So it's a quick release knot that's not adjustable. So one end I got the ferroman's friction hitch and on the other end I've got the double half hitch with a bite. And as you can see here it takes just seconds to untie it and get your rope back. So you can break down camp extremely quickly. Very fast and efficient. Okay here's another little tip. It's not really a knot but since we're on the subject of tarps I thought I'd throw it in here. Basically pinch a little loop, feed it through the grommet, and then put a stick through it, trim it off, there you go. You've now uh, attached your tarp to a ridge line, okay? And you can just go down the edge, really fast, easy way to secure your tarp. So now let me show you the fisherman's bend or the grapevine bend. It's a great way of securing two ropes to each other, to tying dissimilar ropes or even different size ropes together. You tie this knot by putting what's called a strangle knot onto one of the ropes. And oh, this is also similar to like a double overhand knot. And you can see here, it's pretty simple, pretty fast to tie, uh, not, not too complicated. That's what's the beauty of this knot. It's really simple. You just tie that strangle knot on one side, and then you use the other rope to tie a strangle knot on the other side. And when it's all done, the two knots will slide towards each other and they'll stop each other from going any further. This is a really strong way of joining two ropes and it doesn't take up a lot of rope to tie this knot. Once you tighten that, it is not coming off very easily. I barely pulled this together because I wanted my rope back and uh, I really had to get my fingernails out to get that knot undone. Now here's another knot you need to know. It's the water knot. It is the knot for joining two pieces of nylon strapping together. It's super easy. You learn it once, you'll never forget it. And uh, it's basically this, just make an overhand knot and keep it really loose, okay? Nice and loose, plenty of gaps. And take the second piece and just follow along and have it lay right on top of the first piece of webbing. Just trace it all the way through the knot. And there you go, tighten it up. Bam, that thing is not coming undone. Like a lot of these bends, it's uh, a little hard to get undone, but it's not too bad. But once you do it, you'll never forget it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out multiple videos a week and often do gear giveaways. 
Leave a comment if you have any questions and see you next time.